All right, we are back after a week off. I uh, hope everyone enjoyed a safe uh, and relaxing as possible Thanksgiving, but we are back. This is actually episode nine of our little I Dry Needle to the Point podcast. I am your host. I'm I Dry Needle president, founder, Paul Kaloran. Uh, and today we have another one of the brilliant minds of ICE, the Institute of Clinical Excellence. Uh, today we have Alan Fredenhall, uh, he's a PT, DPT. He's a CrossFit level two coach. Uh, like I said, you probably know him best. He's actually the COO of ICE, and he's also one of the lead faculty teaching their uh, clinical management of fitness athletes, which is kind of one of the roads we'll go down today, talking about CrossFit, weightlifting, all of that. Otherwise, he's founder, owner of Private Practice Health HQ Wellness and PT in Michigan, and he's a coach at CrossFit Fenton. So, Alan. Welcome to the show. Welcome aboard. Thanks, Paul. When you uh, kind of read it all out like that, it makes me seem accomplished. Yeah. I mean, I, I cut out a lot. <laughs> much more. That's just the, the highlights. Um, and thanks for your time. This is kind of our to the point. So if you haven't watched us before, this is an intentionally very brief. I mean, once we dive into it, I'm trying to keep this discussion to 15 minutes or less. And really that means, I mean, we could go lots of different directions with Alan specifically. I mean, his role uh, with the virtual, the social media aspect of ICE and kind of building that virtual empire that ICE has become. We could talk private practice. Um, obviously I'll try and infuse the little dry needling aspects because I know uh, Alan as a clinician uses dry needling. Um, but today I wanna focus, it's actually kind of been a theme for the past month, but I kind of like that it's this, this new version of PT, and even ICE is branding this PT 2.0 as far as the next gen PT. And the emphasis here kind of is the, the, the load, the weightlifting, the barbell aspect of rehab um, that it seems like our pendulum is swinging towards. But before we get into more specific stuff, Alan, um, I kind of just want to hear your story. I mean, you are obviously a PT. Um, so you have the clinical side. I want to know what got you into PT. You're also a CrossFit coach. You're a CrossFit athlete. So what's kind of been your journey entering all of this CrossFit coaching PT? I got into PT uh, in undergrad. I was studying exercise physiology. And, and one of our courses was about studying graduate level professionals who had a basis in exercise. And so I followed a couple different professionals, some, some exercise physiologists themselves, some strength coaches, and then I followed a physical therapist. And kind of uh, was lucky enough to follow a physical therapist at the VA here in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and kind of got hooked on uh, not only PT itself, but kind of the more the performance side of, you know, beyond uh, the initial treatment, beyond the manual therapy, what, what kind of goes into the other 40 minutes of the session, the other uh, sessions in a plan of care beyond the initial eval. So really got hooked on that, went to PT school, out of PT school, um, started CrossFit in 2018. So a couple of years ago at the time, it was just very, very overweight, it weighed about uh, 400 pounds. So lost a lot of weight, kind of got hooked on CrossFit, um, found a, a type of exercise that I enjoyed doing every day and really got into the coaching side of things of, of not only doing it myself, doing CrossFit, but, but sharing it and getting other people hooked on CrossFit and seeing how it, it could change their life. And from that, getting uh, into teaching a, a PTs, how to kind of take on that role, that hybrid blend between PT and coach as well, about how to work, not only work with these athletes, but kind of blend some of these ideas into practice of getting people to do their Therax at higher intensity, pushing them to actually lift above 60% of their max so they're actually getting stronger in PT on top of all the other things that go into PT, the, the evaluation, the assessment, the clinical reasoning, the manual therapy. That's awesome. And again, he packed a lot into that because it's, it's really an impressive story. And again, what they're, what you are doing personally with your practice, but what ICE is doing uh, is really inspiring. Um, and just because I know you needle and I actually, one of the first times I met you, I believe was on a needling course. Um, when, did, when did dry needling enter the equation as a PT? And I guess you know, the follow-up question is how do you use it with everything you just mentioned as far as the other 40 minutes of the session, getting them out in front of a barbell. So when did dry needling enter your practice and how do you use it currently? 
Yeah, we got uh, a little exposure in school to dry needling, but not a lot. It was kind of an after hours thing. We actually had uh, Ido come to uh, campus over from Grand Rapids and just talk briefly about the basic mechanisms, the theory, and we practiced on each other's forearms or something like that. But that was it beyond school. Getting into practice, what I realized is we had a lot of people calling on the phone asking, hey, do you do this dry needling thing? And the clinic I was at, and me personally, the answer was no, no one here does it. I don't know how to do it. And just kind of thinking of, you know, when people call on the phone and say, hey, do you do dry needling? I think it will help my back pain. Being able to match that patient's expectation to the treatment they're looking for is not only going to get them to book that evaluation, but, but probably help a lot in uh, getting them in the clinic, reducing their pain and, and getting them back to uh, whatever they want to do goal wise. So just knowing that was a gap I had in my skill set that I had to, to get short up. Yeah, and I agree. And you actually, we hear this a lot on courses and I'm going to throw you a question that um, it's a kind of a curveball because it wasn't on our list, but um, we hear this a lot on courses and it's true. I mean, dry needling is just that gateway drug who gets people on your website <laughs> through your doors. And honestly, sometimes people come to you, especially if you're a cash pay provider, just for needling, meaning they want to just spend that 40 to 60 minutes just laying on the table with needles. So a common question, or I just want to hear your spiel, your mindset, whatever. How do you get people from, I'm just here for the needling aspect into the other aspects of whatever it is, corrective exercise, just healthier lifestyle, that sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, we, we offer that and I'm just incapable as a person of just offering needling. I just, I, <laughs> I can't, I can't have somebody in and just, and just stick needles in them and have them leave. I'm, I'm addicted to showing them change and, and going through the whole process of gathering the symptom behavior, doing some pre-test post tests and showing them that change. And I do that with every patient. And I think no matter what the intervention is, needling, spinal manipulation, um, showing them that change, look, your grip strength was 22 pounds and it was painful after needling. It was 42 pounds and it's not painful. That's incredible change. Um, and I think, you know, if they're just coming in for needling, I think that's where you try and, and close the deal, make the sale of like, let's see what else we can do for you. If I could show you this much change in a few minutes, you know, why don't you come back and let's get stronger or let's continue using the needling to help your pain and improve your function, but let's take this a little bit further. Ah, uh, yes. The test retest and how powerful that can be showing our patients the change. Um, another common question uh, that I get on dry needling courses, and I mean, you being a lead faculty on Con Ed, I'm sure you get similar. You know, people get really jazzed, like we just said, about learning dry needling, like literally having this new shiny tool in their clinic. So a lot of times they buy into like uh, not just the modality, but kind of they see uh, answers just like you just gave the faculty talking about how they integrate it into their practice. And then they ask, you know, I just took these dry needling courses. What would you take as a con ed course to supplement that? And honestly, my answer is something like you guys. I mean, it's functional training, it's strength and conditioning training. You know, there's a pain science piece, which I also know Justin Dunaway and you guys offer. So my answer is kind of those types of courses or education to supplement dry needling. Someone on your course uh, asking the same question, what's your recommendation? And I'm not fishing here for a, a dry needling endorsement. Yeah, and we're really big on, you know, what makes a successful therapist is somebody that, that has no gaps. As Jeff would say, somebody that's a samurai, somebody that anybody comes in the clinic, no matter what their problem is, what their demographic is, what their population is, you should be able to to treat that person, or at least somebody in your clinic should be able to. And so that means being really comfortable with spinal manipulation, being comfortable with dry needling, being comfortable with loading that person, progressing them, uh, especially if they're coming in and they're already uh, an active person and, and still active or trying to get back to being active. You need to be able to know what you're looking at as far as what movements they're having issues with, progressing them back to those movements. And then other specialties, you know, uh, being comfortable working with the pelvic floor, maybe being comfortable working with the older adult, just kind of closing up as many gaps as you possibly can to, to better treat as many patients as possible that come through your door. Yeah. And that's all, it's probably already answering my next question, but I mentioned ice, you kind of created this brand, uh, PT 2.0. So I just want to, it might be a similar answer, but what does that mean? What are you guys creating over there as the PT 2.0? So 
So we say PT 2.0 is somebody that's fitness forward, manual therapy skilled and psychologically informed. Somebody that is good with their hands, that is comfortable with spinal manipulation, with dry needling, with using manual therapy to create that within session change, which kind of opens up that window to get them out in the gym, to get them deadlifting, squatting, whatever we need to do to strengthen them, that, that kind of corrective exercise component fitness forward of, of kind of recognizing that the majority of people who come through our doors have an issue with lifestyle, maybe more so than whatever is the, the origin of, of their pain or symptoms. And that we need to get comfortable talking to them about diet, nutrition, sleep, kind of getting them hooked on exercise, finding them a routine, a type of exercise that they'll enjoy, that they'll want to perform most days of most weeks. And then also being really psychologically informed, understanding that some people that come through our doors don't have a mechanical acute source of pain. We need to be comfortable working with patients with persistent pain. We need to be comfortable describing pain and using non-mechanical interventions as much as we do mechanical interventions with those patients. So you're saying it's possible to have all of those skills in one clinical clinician. <laughs> we, yeah, we believe so. I, it, you know, it's not something that happens overnight. It's something that uh, probably doesn't happen straight out of school, it kind of requires some extra training. But if you're diligent in practicing these things, incorporating them in their practice, it's totally possible to, to kind of be that, that one-stop shop. We believe like you should be the primary care provider in your area. Somebody should be able to come through your door without a referral from a physician or a surgeon you should be able to do red flag screenings, ensure they're, they're safe and appropriate for PT and take them through a PT plan of care, whatever they may need from you. And you should be comfortable kind of doing all aspects of that independent of other tests or measures from other providers. I love it. And actually one of the best sound bites from when Jeff was on, Jeff Moore, obviously CEO of ICE. Um, I'll paraphrase, I don't remember exactly, but he's like, as, like I said, what's one piece of advice you'd give to like that PT student or that new PT. And he's like, you have to be good at all of it, but you don't have to be good at all of it right now. Like give yourself time, give yourself grace and create a plan basically. And that kind totally. of it's, it's, what you're saying. Yeah. And it's, it's important that we recognize that if we only have a few specialties, then our treatment is going to trend towards our biases with our patient, which may not be what they need. My bias is obviously towards exercise, towards, towards high intensity, heavy lifting, but that's maybe not every patient's goal. And it's important to know uh, where your gaps are so that you don't lead people into just the way you want to treat them, but how they actually need to be treated and want to be treated. Yeah. And I would say my bias is obviously I've become the needle guy. So it's like everyone <laughs> coming in is like, you know, I'm here to see you because of needling or whatever. And honestly, like looking back, I just stopped calling myself a new grad like last year, but I've been out for like 10 years already. And even when I adopted dry needling, there was this pendulum of like, you know, there's an initial apprehension, then you swing over and like you're needling everything and over needling everything. And now I feel like I'm swinging back to where, you know, we don't need 12 needles right now. Let's try these two or three, let's retest. But ultimately the goal is fill in the blank. I mean, that's where you get them out in the gym. That's where you uh, create a, a running, like a micro mesocycle, like you create your, their programming for running. So I feel that I'm swinging further and further away from the needling, but I think it's a healthy balance for me at least. There's a, a lot of good to be done in the middle. Yeah. I hope my pendulum stops in the middle at some point. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we are always short on time and this is going to be a slight pivot, but um, partially because I mentioned it in our marketing. I'm not sure I understand. Oh, Siri has been listening to this whole thing. Um, some of our li listeners are here because you are uh, a samurai, as you say, in virtual education and social media and just like building that presence and not even just like a, a forcible presence, but I'd say, you know, even being a part of it, um, like in your Facebook groups, following you on social media, you've created this enormous, like positive influence energy in this community virtually. So to the gym owners out there, the small clinic owners, or even those PT students that are looking to do the same, like be a positive influence. And I mean, honestly, everyone's trying to build their audience and build their community. Give us two to three things that they can chew on. Yeah, I would say um, whatever you're going to do, make it sustainable. I think there's a, a big uh, uh, people feel pulled to have these giant viral posts 
that, you know, attract thousands of people. That's probably not going to work on, on a regular basis as far as like strategy for your clinic or whatever else you're trying to build brand wise, but do something sustainable, commit to, I'm going to make a post once a week or once every other week. And along that vein of, of finding something sustainable for your schedule is be consistent. Like, like you're doing here, 15 minutes once a week, that's something that's sustainable. That's something that's consistent over time, that consistency and your kind of ability to show up week after week is what's going to build a brand, no matter who you are. If you're trying to get a clinic off the ground or build out a continuing education course, no matter what you're trying to do, that sustainability and consistency is kind of what builds following over time. And just be comfortable knowing that it's, it's a long game. It's not a short game. Um, people want to uh, be uh, big now. Um, but, you know, ice was created almost six years ago by Jeff waking up at 6am every day and jumping on Periscope, which people maybe don't even know what Periscope is anymore. But that's kind of how ice got started 6am every day, 15 minutes, day over day, week over week, that builds a following. And we, we still follow the same model now of what we do. We're making three posts a day now on social media, but it's the same idea. It's 7am, 7, 7 noon, 5pm, three times a day, consistent, sustainable over time. And that's kind of what slowly marches you forward. So don't get caught up and like get followers now, ad campaigns, all this stuff, just commit to something that's sustainable and keep it consistent over time. I love it. And I am a consumer. So I'll add one other aspect is just the quality of the content and the faculty you guys have on board is impressive. I mean, uh, being in Seattle, I've even crossed paths with Sarah Heron. I've been with, uh, Justin and Morgan and Haiti. So just they're, they're good people and they're excellent clinicians. So yeah, consistency, but I'd add um, you guys are on target with the content as well. And that, that they make my job easy. They, they're the ones that create that content. I just kind of have to plot it out and schedule it. They make my job very easy as far as being consistent with the content we put out, the daily show, that sort of stuff. That's awesome. And we are to the point. We are at our 15 minutes. That went so, so first fast. Of all, what's that? I know. <laughs> so fast. Like every time I like, I'm trying to plot through the questions in my head. I'm like, man, 15 minutes is not very long. Like <laughs> this is a this was a dumb idea. We should have done at least 20 or 30. <laughs> <laughs> so, Alan, thanks so much for your time. You can follow Alan personally at alan.fred.dpt. Otherwise, Ice Physio is at Ice Physio on the socials. Uh, if you're not joining us live right now on Facebook uh, or through our Podia platform, once we get everything edited, we are almost everywhere now. We'll be on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts. Um, most of our listeners are catching us after the fact. So we'll post that when it's ready and feel free to jump in with any questions. I know uh, Alan will be on the socials and he can answer those questions, but Alan, Thanks so much for your time. I hope to see you soon. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. All right. See you guys. Have a great week.